So we've talked now about pharmacologic strategies that can be used to treat postpartum depression and postpartum OCD, including two brand new drugs. But we haven't talked yet about the pharmacologic strategies for treating postpartum psychosis, our third main moon syndrome of the postpartum. It's really important to remember that postpartum psychosis, again, is an affective illness with a close relationship with bipolar disorder. Therefore, the mainstay of treatment is a mood stabilizer, lithium. What do we have to know about treating people with mood stabilizers while breastfeeding? Well, first of all, let's remember that the breastfeeding decision is complicated in women with bipolar disorder, not primarily because of the drug risk, but because of the risks of sleep disruption. For many women with bipolar disorder, sleep disruption is a trigger for entering into a mood episode. So for some women who have bipolar disorder, the decision not to breastfeed may be the right one. What about particular mood stabilizers and their use in breastfeeding? We know that lamotrigine has high passage into the breast milk. Adverse reactions are not common, but there's a theoretical risk of Stevens-Johnson, and it's important to inform patients of that. Lithium is a complicated drug to use in breastfeeding, but it's not contraindicated. It has variable passage into the breast milk with the average relative infant dose of about 14%, which is much lower than placental passage. A recent meta-analysis showed adverse effects in about 9% of breastfed infants whose mothers were taking lithium. It's important to use caution due to the risk for dehydration. So for babies, everything they do is fluid-based. Everything they eat is fluid. Everything they excrete is fluid. So they're at high risk of dehydration. And of course, when people become dehydrated, the risk for lithium toxicity is elevated. That means that the use of lithium in breastfeeding has to be a case-by-case decision. It can be useful and helpful in motivated parents who have cooperation with a pediatrician. But it's something to think about carefully and to think about whether this is the patient for whom lithium can be used in breastfeeding. When we think about the other mood stabilizers, the anti-epileptic drugs, they're all considered compatible with breastfeeding. Even valproic acid, which cannot be used in pregnancy due to its high teratogenic potential, it can be used in breastfeeding. So that's an important thing to think about as well. So we've established that all mood stabilizers can be used in postpartum psychosis, but what should we be using? Well, the reality is the best evidence is for lithium. There was a study done in an inpatient group of women with postpartum psychosis, and it looked at a tiered system of giving benzodiazepines, antipsychotics, and lithium for the treatment of postpartum psychosis. Step one was acute treatment with benzodiazepines only. Step two was acute treatment with benzodiazepines and antipsychotics. And step three was the addition of lithium. And what this study found was that 98% of women responded with the addition of lithium, and many women did not respond at those earlier stages of just benzodiazepines or benzodiazepines with antipsychotics. This has led the field to consider lithium the gold standard medication for postpartum psychosis, both for treatment of acute episodes and for prophylaxis of future episodes. So let's review the key points of the treatment of postpartum psychosis. Remember that all mood stabilizing medications can be used in the postpartum, but that of the mood stabilizing medications, lithium is the gold standard treatment for postpartum psychosis, and it should be started as early as possible for all patients identified with this illness. Benzodiazepines and antipsychotics can be used for symptomatic relief in postpartum psychosis, but they do not replace lithium. Remember also that lithium can be used with care in breastfeeding, but the breastfeeding decision in women with postpartum psychosis or bipolar disorder is complicated, more because of the sleep disruption it entails than because of the effects of lithium in breast milk. 